is Gary Dean, detailjuice.com. I'm working on, well, I'm about to start on a 24 foot pursuit. And everybody always asks me, what's the process for detailing boats? The process, the process. Well, it's very similar to anything else. The first thing you do is scrub that bad boy down. Um, you'll see I have a few things in my truck. I don't carry a lot with me. I generally ask the customer for water and power, so I don't generally carry my own. However, I do have my own generator. I do have a way to bring water if I have to. You always want to be prepared for everything, but I believe that because of my experience in people just being generous enough to offer their power and water, I don't think that it's economical for me to haul it around everywhere. Like I said, it makes sense to have that option if you need it because you don't want to lose money because you don't have a way to do the job. But I don't think it's economical or even smart to be hauling around a big trailer full of water and, and generator and all that stuff. So. You know, again, I use an inverter generator, which is cleaner power anyway, but generally they're smaller uh, and cleaner looking, uh, not as loud. I mean, they're better. So the Honda EU2000i is what I recommend for detailing. I actually have a Briggs & Stratton 3000 watt inverter generator, but only because I use that to power my 13,500 BTU uh, RV air conditioner when I go camping sometimes. So. Anyway, that's the reason I have the bigger generator, but I generally recommend the Honda EU2000i. You can run this portable uh, vac, this rigid five horsepower portable, portable rack uh, vacuum, I'm sorry, uh, and the Harbor Freight DA or any other uh, power tool for that matter simultaneously with the Honda EU2000. Anyway. I don't carry that around. Again, that takes very little space, even if you did want to carry it around. I've got this big truck bed, and all I use is what you see here. So I've got a hose, because I'm gonna scrub that bad boy down. I've got extension cord, there's a 100 foot here. I keep a couple of 25 footers. I've got my infinite purpose cleaner, all my products from detailjuice.com, a little stool, a couple of buckets, vacuum, a bag of towels, some tiger's blood, pads I've got my rotary polishers and my dual action polisher over there and uh <clears throat> that's it generally carry some soft scrub you guys know all about that um a couple other things in there i don't want to show you just yet but um this is the 24 foot pursuit you can see the outside isn't bad the interior really isn't either um, I'm going to be hitting the outside with my solitaire it's in my uh, marine series the inside He's replacing all of the vinyl. So he told me don't worry about that. I just pulled the cover off of the console Back here all the controls. So I'll be scrubbing all this down. You notice just slight oxidation on everything not bad but again I'm gonna be handling it all. I got all the trap doors open uh, just so I'll clean in in there and all the nooks and crannies and stuff like that but for the most part it looks good slight oxidation up here on the uh, top deck rail a little bit on the transom trailer looks to be in good shape so get all the water marks and stuff off of the uh, transom area but again it's all glossy it looks good just want to bring the last little bit of shine back to her overall not a huge deal as far as restoration or whatever but she definitely needs to be prettied up and that's what the customer is looking for so i'm going to get right at it first thing i'm going to do like i said is bring the scrub brush and the bucket over there and scrub that bad boy down and i'll bring you back after that so you can see where i go about the detail all right, I have made the executive executive decision to use Tiger's Blood for my cleaner instead of using soap. Normally, on a job like this, I would break out the Dawn dish detergent and use it because it's a heavy-duty degreaser and it's cheap. 
to just strip off everything and anything. But what I've done is I've put about, I don't know, maybe 12 ounces of uh, tiger's blood straight up in this bucket. And now I'm gonna fill it with water, blend it up really well, and give the interior a hose down. You can see how just dusty and dirty it is. Nothing big. Um, but I'm gonna use just the tiger's blood as the cleaner because it's it's gonna be it's gonna do a very similar job as the Dawn would do. Um, but it's my product, so that's why I'm gonna use it. And you can you can see that it does set up really well. So you can use it as a soap to strip anything and everything off. Uh, as far as cost goes, it's less expensive than the Infinite Purpose Cleaner, which would do a similar job. But as we all know, Tiger's Blood is a more aggressive cleaner. And uh, for this particular situation where I'm trying to remove black streaks, see all that, and you know, just dirt and grime that's been sitting around, just want a heavier cleaner. So that's why we're going with the Tiger's Blood. Notice all of these suds. So, but on gel coat, I find that it does a great job of cleaning fast. Uh, again, you don't want it to dry, so I'll do a section and rinse it off. But I want to remove all of this dirt and grime from underneath the hatch doors. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to get going with that right now. I'm just doing a quick waterless wash. Literally just wiping it down with infinite use detail juice to knock off any salt that's there. And then uh, I'm going to go right into polishing. This boat doesn't need a ton. It's got a little bit of oxidation. I want to improve the shine. I definitely want to protect it. But what I am doing right now is prepping the surface, making it clean so that I can actually polish it. Guys, as I said, this boat is in pretty good shape. I just want to knock the outside layer of oxidation off. So I'm actually using Infinite Finish today with a uh, Harbor Freight DA and a maroon Buff and Shine Low Pro Pad. Very similar to what I would use to finish on a car, if not the exact same thing. Um, and it's shining it up real nice. I actually did this section right here already. So just going to keep on knocking it out and then we'll come back and I'll pr protect it with the new stuff. So I'm polishing the boat now off the interior and generally the interiors are more oxidized than the hull is and it's exactly that case on this particular situation. So I've been using infinite finish. I got the hull done I also protected the hole with the new stuff uh, and then uh, I got in here I started doing some testing seeing if uh, infinite finish was going to handle it it's improving it it's just not doing what it needs to do so I'm going to switch it up to some infinite cut um, just a little explanation of why I'm not using my marine products um, generally I would use the oxidation eater compounding polish with a rotary buffer and or a rotary polisher we should say and a wool pad um, I chose to use the Harbor Freight DA it's a little bit easier to maneuver um, it's lighter it's just easier to use than a rotary not necessarily a problem until you get inside and you've got all these nooks and crannies to deal with but my point is it, the gel coat oxidation eater compounding polish is far more aggressive than infinite cut and you don't need that much cut when you're not dealing with severe oxidation this is only lightly oxidized so I don't necessarily need that much cut but also I'm not using the rotary polisher which the rotary and the wool the forced rotation and the extra friction and heat that the rotary provides is going to help break down those larger abrasives uh, on the gel coat. And whereas 
infinite cut uses a combination of diminishing and non-diminishing abrasives what that means to you is it's a small chunk abrasive um, a combination of, of smaller chunk abrasives that break down a lot easier on a small throw DA or even a large throw DA uh, so that you don't have to work it as hard to get a better end result so I can get awesome results and awesome cut out of the Harbor Freight DA um, without having to have the extra mechanical ability of the rotary polisher. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do some polishing with infinite cut. And yes, I was using this pad with infinite finish. I'm gonna just go ahead and use the same pad without cleaning it with infinite cut. You know why? Because it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, definitely a better end result. It's not patchy. It's not patchy like the infinite finish was, which means the infinite finish just wasn't strong enough, uh, abrasive-wise, to cut down the oxidation. But this is definitely doing better, a better job with infinite cut. So I'm just gonna keep cranking with that. We're getting work done getting on the uh, small spots. I switched out the uh, five-inch backing plate and the maroon pad for the three and a half inch backing plate and a orange buff and shine pad <laughs> i'm beat it's been a long day it is currently 5 30 and i've been here since nine so, solid eight hours of working on this bad boy, but she's shaping up, so that's good. All right, I haven't done the final wipe down of this. Uh, it's actually a 25 foot pursuit. I thought it was a 24 for some reason, but it is a uh, 2570 pursuit. Um, as you can see, it's very glossy throughout. I polished the whole interior with infinite cut and I applied the new product but I can tell you it is obviously you've, you've realized from this video that it's a protective product and from all of my testing it is about three times stronger protection wise than infinite diamond shield so I mean look at that gloss and that's infinite cut I did not use infinite finish up here at all I did apply the new product to all the gel coat but I did not have to finish it with anything as far as additional from infinite cut and that's a very similar result that you get from infinite cut on automotive paint as well I mean, unless, it, unless the paint is just stupid soft, you get an amazing finish. So, whew, I am beat. Console, I hand polish most of that just because of all the nooks and crannies and stuff. And you can see that it's got awesome gloss. So, I'm getting ready to do the final hose down to get all of this polishing debris and stuff out of here and then uh, he told me don't do anything with the vinyl because he's replacing it all so that's why that looks like crap because I did not touch it I'm gonna do a final wipe down on all the aluminum and then all the stainless and then like I said I'm gonna hose down the interior wipe down the Lexan and then I'm gonna get out of this bad boy probably give the whole a final wipe and I am going to be totally done but before I got the interior wet I wanted you to see it dry and how glossy it is it really truly looks amazing 
I got down in there, polished all in there. I polished all back here, the transom area. I did not, I forgot to bring the muriatic acid, which is what I generally use to remove stains like that. I'm pretty upset at myself. In fact, I am going to offer to come back over and fix that spot. Uh, he does have a product from West Marine in here, rust and stain remover, which smells extremely acidic. Uh, this did not even touch it. In fact, I pulled everything out of this compartment and I tried to clean down there, that area, but that stuff didn't do anything for that. I actually tried it on the outside here. It did nothing for it. Um, and I'm guessing like that's why you would buy that product. So if you're looking at that product, I can tell you as a professional detailer that that will not remove the stains you needed to remove per what it says it does. Um, muriatic acid is some nasty stuff. Uh, however, it does a fantastic job of re removing water lines, browning, that kind of thing from the water. And it also removes like soaked in uh, fish guts and all kinds of stuff like that. It does a fantastic job of removing the nasty rust stains like that, but I didn't bring it. So I'm pretty bummed, but like I said, I am all about my reputation. So I am going to offer to come back over here and handle that. And uh, it won't be a big deal. I'll just knock it out. So anyway, I'm gonna get off the interior, straighten it out, and then wipe down the hull, and then I'll give you an outside shot when I'm completely done. So I'll see you in a few. All right, guys, I'm all done with this 25 foot pursuit. You'll notice she's very glossy. Inside and out, I already showed you the interior. Exterior is all kinds of glossy. She looks amazing. All I used on the hull was infinite, uh, infinite finish with that maroon buff and shine low pro pad. I sell those on detailjuice.com. That's an amazing combo on automotive paint and on gel coat when, well, on gel coat, it's an awesome combo when there's not a lot of oxidation. This hull wasn't bad. The interior was far worse, but still not real bad, but you can see the shine. I was left with um, I got the whole transom area nice and polished out the lower portion and this back portion so it looks great I put the covers back on where they were when I got here uh, I also want to mention that uh, I, I said before that I'm using the customers water and power now the least you could do if they allow you to use their water and power is to make sure that the hose is properly rolled up, make sure the extension cord, if they left you one, is properly, properly rolled up and everything looks nice and make sure the yard is clean. I had this yard looking rough while I was here working, but you'll notice that the electrical cord is nice and rolled up over there and the hose is nice and rolled up right there and turned off and the pressure is relieved. The yard looks amazing. I'm parked over there. Now I'm gonna go get my stuff packed up and I'm out of here. So thanks so much for watching. If you got any questions, 813-846-4406. If I can help you in your detailing endeavors, please use the number. Uh, send me a text message. Check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It is a group on Facebook where we talk about only my products and my processes. Um, if I can help you, let me know. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. So I told you guys that I was going to come back over or I was going to offer to come back over to fix that rust spot that I didn't get off before. So now I'm here doing that. Um, and I just took another walk around and uh, just touched up a couple spots. But if you'll notice, all that rust spot is gone. It was a huge area right there. But I took care of it all. I got that all straightened out. And uh, 
there was a little bit of a uh, scum line underneath in the front. I got all that straightened out. I handled the uh, regular hole. I usually don't take care of a lot of below the main hole line right here. So from here down, I usually clean it. Uh, again, I didn't have any muriatic acid with me, which is why I didn't remove that stain before, but also it's almost impossible to get rid of a really nasty scum line that's soaked way into the gel coat uh, without muriatic acid. So because I had it and I, he did mention that the scum line was below the main hole line, I just wiped all of that down with muriatic acid and then removed that big spot in the back. So anyway, I'm out of here. Um, you always got to do what's right. And you know if if there's ever a question in the customer's mind you need to make sure you take care of it and that's exactly what i did i'm a man of my word i came back over here all the way across town to just take care of that spot that i missed because i forgot to bring the acid so don't forget the muriatic acid if you're working on a boat also soft scrub will help you tremendously if you're working on molded uh vinyl so anyway that's where we're at and she's all done.